So no one's an island, no one's by themselves in this thing. Every enterprise is touching other assets and in order to enable one software package, you have to you know, integrate it with others. So I think Robin's point is a good one that their customers are trying to get the capabilities that you know, Cisco is leading ahead with from a security standpoint, from a remote work standpoint, a zero trust standpoint. But in order to get that value, you have to integrate with everything else that enterprise is consuming. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Incident Report presented by Quest Technology Management. I'm Paul Burke, Director of Technology Communications. Every week, I'm joined by VP of Sales and Partnerships, Adam Burke. The Incident Report brings you conversations with thought leaders, business innovators, and channel mavericks to help you stay productive and agile in a changing technology landscape. Hey everybody, welcome to the Incident Report. Adam, how are you doing today? Good, Paul. Excited to be here as always. I, uh, like a professional, Adam, I had some tea with honey in it, which I heard is great for my voice. So if for some reason you're like, wow, he sounds really angelic today. That's the reason why. I will be referring to you for the rest of this show as Silky Smooth. So Silky Smooth, what do we have on the docket for today? Adam, great question. Silky Smooth here, everybody. Customers are tired of being system integrators. This article is from channelfutures.com. All links in the description. If supply chain problems aren't going away anytime soon, maybe you need to change the way you sell. Cisco Systems is encouraging partners to come along with it in its software-based as-a-service journey, and in some cases, partners are leading the way. So, Adam, what do you think about this whole Cisco saying, hey, there's another way to approach situations? It was interesting to see that, that Robbins brought this up. You know, his predecessors in Cisco for a long time has been trying to move their battleship of partners down the path of managed services and, and reoccurring revenue. I mean, so Chuck Robbins brought this up at Cisco Live just last week. You know, we heard this message as a Cisco partner back in, I believe, 2007, 2008. It was brought to our attention by leadership at Cisco, letting people know that, hey, you really need to start transitioning to what they were calling at the time consumption-based economics for IT spend. Chambers was talking about this a long time ago, and this has been a, this has been a challenge for a lot of the organizations that are traditionally in the value added reseller space to move to the service provider model. I believe it still is a challenge. A lot of it has to do with how services are delivered, how organizations like Cisco report their numbers back to the street and how they're valued as companies. There's a lot of different areas there. And I think the biggest burden uh, to the partner community is how are these delivered and managed and ongoing? And you'd think it'd be easy to set up monthly reoccurring invoices and things like that. But we've been a Cisco partner 25 plus years, and we go to the gold partner MSP partner summits and lunches and things like that, and talk with other partners. And you'd be, be really surprised how many folks have not quite gone down that path yet to accommodate what, uh, what Mr. Robbins is talking about here. Since we've been with Cisco for 25 years or, or partnered with Cisco for 25 years, this, this is a big change. Well, it's, it's a big change in the sense of delivering the capability of the customer on an ongoing basis, mm -hmm. right? So the idea of, you know, there's a joke with Cisco, Hey, they, they want to sell route switch, whatever goes back to selling route switch. Great. Just sell more switches, sell more routers, keep moving those boxes. That's shifted over the last five, 10 years to more software and subscription-based licensing. Cisco is a huge billion dollar company with a lot of different capabilities, a lot of different hardware, a lot of different services that they're slowly shifting all of those to annual contract value subscriptions where you know their people are incentivized to sell annual contracts and their customers are, are incentivized to purchase software in an annual or a total contract value state. That's different than buying a bunch of hardware. That's a different service model. But in order to make that software function, in order to make it, you know, usable for the end user, you have to tie it into a bunch of other SaaS applications, right? So no one's an island. No one's by themselves in this thing. Every enterprise is touching other assets. And in order to enable one software package, you have to, you know, integrate it with others. So I think Robin's point is a good one that their customers are trying to get the capabilities that, you know, Cisco is leading ahead with from a security standpoint, from a remote work standpoint, a zero trust standpoint. But in order to get that value, you have to integrate with everything else that enterprise is consuming, right? So 
You have to tie it in with their Microsoft environment. You have to tie it in with their diverse cloud environment. They might have a hybrid workforce. They might have a, a hybrid cloud system. They might have multiple SaaS providers. If you're rolling out software as a service and, you know, if you're rolling out a Meraki instance with a bunch of cloud-based controllers for your new wireless environment or your core switching or whatever you're doing, that has to talk to the rest of the world. And mm -hmm. who's going to actually do that work is what Robbins is saying. Mm -hmm. They need people to actually go in there and make that happen. One of the reasons Cisco dominated the network and switch environment was because they really promoted the idea of end customers and users hiring CCIEs, CCMPs, all sorts of different Cisco accredited engineers on their IT staff. Well, that was 30 years ago, mm. right? That was an old way of doing things. People are, people are retiring. People are moving on. People are getting, are getting trained up in, in SaaS applications in the cloud and Azure and AWS, and they're getting certified in those skill sets how, who's going to help tie the world together for Cisco, right? And that's where he's evangelizing to his partners. Hey, you guys better, you need to help out figuring this out to, to turn these services on. That's your customers are, are running out of people to do that. So Robin said, while some customers still prefer to be DIY provisioning Cisco technology, the majority of them want more help. Most of our customers are sick and tired of being system integrators, he said. Shahid Ahmed, executive vice president of new ventures and innovation for Cisco partner NTT agreed. He said he sees Cisco making a positive shift to cloud and software. Most customers are looking for that software as a service, network as a service, and infrastructure as a service model, Ahmed told Channel Features. The thing Cisco is working on makes sense and will align to what customers actually want. Are you seeing that there is a lot of customers who still want a DIY? Or are they becoming more, hey, I need help. And also, Adam, follow-up question. Why do you see that as a situation? Would you say that's because of supply chain issues? That's a lot of questions, Adam. And I'd prefer complete sentences as your answer. It was funny that it talks about how most of our customers are sick and tired of being system integrators. And Mr. Robbins kind of said that to, to the partner community. And then it quotes someone from NTT, a gentleman, Shahid Ahmed, executive vice president over there who says that Cisco's making the positive shift to cloud software and delivering what customers want. I don't think those two things are necessary. They're kind of related. They're a little tangential in my opinion. Robbins is saying, hey guys, we need to help customers make this work because they're not, and they're getting sick and tired of having to, to tie this together. And Mr. Ahmed was basically saying, yeah, Cisco's developing cool software. Not the same thing. <laughs> That's not what he said. And so that's one, that's something I think Cisco has been dealing with for a long time is they're, they're communicating to their client, to their partners, they're a huge partner ecosystem. And they're evangelizing the idea of, we need people to help us deliver this capability. It's complex. It's a very, very diverse network. People are consuming IT in a myriad of ways mm -hmm. and we need help delivering that to the clients. It's, it's not rebind 20 years ago, it was, hey, these guys at, at Cisco, this team at Cisco is delivering the latest and greatest exactly what the customer wants. All right. Mm -hmm. So Chuck Robbins or John Chambers is a, is a visionary when it comes to delivering what the customer wants. That's 20 years ago. It's no longer about, Hey, they're a visionary and they're leading. It's, Hey, the world's complex. And in order to keep up with the world, we need partners to help us deliver totally different message. Now, are they still visionary? Are they still pushing the envelope and, and growing and doing great things? Absolutely. But that's not why they're going to continue to win. So I, I think those two segments right there that you described, Paul, I think that's a perfect example of what you did yesterday is not going to keep you alive today. Mm. And, and you really need to focus on the idea of capability with clients and how are we going to actually implement the, the next upgrade. And, and Cisco is just at their partner, at their partner event, at their Cisco live event with all their end customers, everybody, all the big players was there on the main stage saying, you need to shift your business into a system integration approach and take that off the plate of your customers so they can focus on what, what makes their business different as opposed to what keeps their, what keeps their pulse moving. Those are different, different models. Great catch about what Robbins was saying versus what Ahmed was saying. Such a good observation that those are different things. They've been dealing with that for a long time. I mean, someone, someone has to substantially move the cheese here for people to shift their thinking. 
Do you think the supply chain issues and inflation or stagflation is going to shift it? Like that is going to be the thing that really kind of shakes people out of the doldrums and kind of really helps them like hear what Robbins is saying. Optimistically, I'd say that'd be great. That'd be a great story to tell. And they're, they're probably going to be analysts and folks out there who tell that story. I, I think re the reality is people are going to consume and people are going to sell kind of the way they always have. And th those organizations that do figure out how to address what the customer's looking to do as they're, you know, when they're looking to do it are going to be successful. And I think the other ones, you know, kind of creative destruction are going to go away. And a lot of the vendors out there, the OEMs and the manufacturers are starting to make that distinction in the channel. Hey, th there's, there's folks who are going to get it. You got to kind of feed your eagles and starve your turkeys. And I think some turkeys are going to start starving here. And some people who do get the shift are going to, are going are gonna to accelerate. Feed your eagles and starve your turkeys. Is that a phrase? I just, uh, what do you think? Is it I love it. No, I like that it. one. I think that's I good. Stole, I stole it from a partner who taught that to me about 10 years ago, a gentleman out of Richmond, Virginia. I'll leave his name out of it. I feel like it's slightly judgmental towards turkeys. I mean, if I well, remember right, Ben Franklin wanted that to be the, you know, the United States bird. So Adam, I think you're throwing some shade unnecessarily at turkeys. I am. And all due respect to Mr. Franklin, I'm glad the turkey is not our national bird. Who coming here for hot takes, everybody, the incident report dropping the hot takes. July 4th is coming up and, and, uh, I, I just, I don't, I just don't see the majesty of a, of a turkey, you know, soaring across the sky, you know, as it, as it goes in for a crash landing. I don't, I don't see gracefulness with a turkey. Yeah. Well, with that description, I mean, you're not painting an elegant picture of the majestic turkey. You ever seen a turkey fly before? I mean, it looks like a fat guy on a treadmill, like going too fast. It's not a good look. It's not a good thing. Well, that's true. We can cut, we can cut the fat guy on the turkey uh, or the fat guy on the treadmill out of the podcast. We'll just cut that part. That's good. That was Ben Franklin's national animal fat guy on a treadmill. So he really kind of had a theme going. Okay. Moving on to the second article. This article is on channel e to e.com. And is there a silver bur bullet to successful marketing? Uh, spoiler alert. No. So we're going to get into it right now. Uh, it's a great article. Again, links are in the description. The article is written by Stephanie Hammond. To be a good marketer, you simply have to begin and then keep going. And that's really essentially what it boiled down to. And Adam, I would love your insight in it too. But the beginning is the hardest thing because people are constantly looking for that silver bullet. They don't want to waste time with marketing. So they think, oh, if I can just find the one thing to do, then I can just keep moving on to other important issues. And she makes a great point. She's like, hey, there are two things you got to do start and then keep going because marketing isn't a one and done type of initiative. It isn't a set it and forget it endeavor. It is dynamic and fluid and always requires tweaking to help improve results, which is good and bad because if there's no one silver bullet, then one thing won't ever make you succeed. And it also won't make you fail. You just have to keep showing up and do a little bit. And it's kind of like one step forward and you're going to, you're going to start getting momentum. That's a great overview, Paul. I mean, so I, I like this article. I think, you know, I think Stephanie did a great job of basically highlighting the idea that you got to start and then you have to consistently and incrementally stick with it. There is no silver bullet. Something we struggle with, our, I know our partners struggle with it. And, and even our customers is like, hey, how do you communicate what you can do to help your clients to them in an effective way without spamming them, without turning them off from a sales perspective? How do you effectively communicate what you can do and and you and you can't sit around and and think about it uh to death without actually trying things out so trying out test markets trying out test communications seeing what works making incremental improvements we found this sometimes some of our best service offerings come from clients feedback about how we're communicating to them right so we have an offering that is probably very unique in the market. We call it technical on-call support. As much as I'd love to say I came up with that idea or someone at Quest came up with that idea, that idea was born out of clients not being aware that we're able to help them with diverse engineering skills anytime they want. Now, and that was because our clients, you know, we'd communicate with them, hey, we help out with, with we were just talking about Cisco, right? So, hey, we help out with Cisco services. Or, hey, we help out with Microsoft, or we're, we do a lot of data center work, or we can do physical infrastructure. We would tell all these kind of one-piece one, one messages at a time, 
the best message we got was when a customer actually came back to us, you know, based on one of, one of our communications around database administration and, Hey, we can help with, you know, can help with your DBA services. And they said, Hey, that's great to know. I'm a managed service customer. You're, so you guys are helping me manage my firewall. I had some real trouble with some SQL queries over the weekend that were messing up all of our analytics and reporting for some of our financials. It would have been great to have a DBA come in and help us out. That was feedback from a client that we were advertising to about something totally different. You know, we were supporting them from a firewall perspective and they gave us feedback. So we would have never known that if we weren't stumbling along trying to communicate what we could. I love the way Stephanie oversees this or, or outlines this kind of, hey, start somewhere, keep moving, automate what you can, and then, and then make adjustments as you go. She starts at such a great point, essentially, hey, go find your fortress of solitude, like get away from everything and all distractions and turn off your email and turn off your phone because you need to set a plan. Like you have to have a marketing plan because without that, you're just kind of flailing and you're trying things, get away and then figure out what works from all the testing. So I really like the idea of just separating yourself from all the noise because I think a lot of times we think multitasking is the goal, but it usually turns into like multi-distractions and we don't, and I know I, that happens to me all the time. Yeah. You gotta kinda, you gotta kinda set those boundaries, right? You have a, you have a left limit and a right limit of where you can move and Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is the ultimate goal. This is what I want to communicate. This is what I'm trying to do. And that, that does help you from, you know, not getting distracted with, with all the noise out there. And there's a ton of noise, you know, we were on a call this morning and it's really, really important. What's the outcome you're looking for? What are you trying to do? What's your, what's your thesis about, about the market you're attacking? And then what's your strategy to go after that thesis? Not, not that your thesis is wrong and not that your strategy is wrong, but those two things need to be in alignment, right? So you have a strategy, you have a thesis about what you're getting after and what you're targeting. And then, okay, so this is what I believe I'm dealing with. Then, okay, what strategy do we have to go after that and to exploit that thesis? And step three is staying the course, because you mentioned earlier, there are a lot of distractions in life and there are a lot of people giving you advice and it will pull you off course. And when you slide off course and things go wrong, you might attribute it to the plan, but you're already way off course. Yeah. The, this whole stay the course thing. I'm a big Jocko Willink fan for anyone who hasn't heard me mention him about 20 times. Everybody take <laughs> a shot. If you're playing, when does Adam bring up Jocko Willink? <laughs> Yeah, if you're playing, uh, if you're playing the incident report bingo in, uh, Adam bringing up Jocko Willink is definitely on every bingo card, but, uh, he has a, you know, discipline equals freedom and the idea that you can't rely on motivation. Uh, you need to rely on discipline. And so even when, you know, if you set that course, Hey, I'm, this is what we're going to be communicating and this is how we're going to communicate it, slight tweaks to it, but stick into that, that pl discipline plan. It helps with everything and, and marketing, marketing and communicating your capabilities is, is no different. And that's what, that's what we're, you know, we do that every day trying to communicate how we can help and make sure that we're available to help when needed. Do you think it's important to establish with customers that this won't be an instant gratification outcome? Like it's going to take some, it's going to take some time to get to the goal you want. Is it important to, to mention that to customers? Yeah. When you're, when you're starting out a path, depending, depending on what the project is, it, it's really, really good to have that truth in advertising around, we're going to start here. This is our expectation and this is what we know right now. And here's how we're going to kind of chew through the project and, and mm -hmm. work together on it. The challenge that you can face is a lot of organizations will look for the answer or the silver bullet or the definitive statement around the outcome and, and cost. That's a choice that every organi organization can make as far as how do you want to manage that risk? Some of our competitors and some people we deal with, they're perfectly fine throwing out a number and living and dying by that number or change requesting it to death as they get halfway across the river. We found long-term, you know, effectively communicating with your customers around, this is where we understand you are. We understand you want to build this application and these are your inputs you have right now. Here's what this first, here's what this first session is going to cost. Here's what this first phase is going to cost. And then we'll readjust course from there. Not everybody likes it. That's okay. And we're okay. Kind of engaging with folks who are, are looking to have that that reality conversation back to our earlier conversation around, around system integration. There's so much dynamically changing in the market right now that it can be a challenge to, to understand all of the cost inputs that, that can come up 
and it is definitely a journey when you're when you're tying software packages to hardware to diverse users to you know people on campus off campus from a from a corporate headquarters standpoint it's across, all over the board a beautiful full circle landing adam nailed it thank you paul thank you all the judges are putting up tens on their scorecard because you you brought it all together adam really nice it's about tying it all together, Paul. It's, it's, it's do it for the listeners. Adam, aside from your superhuman ability to tie pieces of information together, what would you like people to know going away from this podcast today? I think a lot of things are changing right now. I know there's a lot of kind of fear, uncertainty, and doubt out there in the marketplace right now. These types of shifts in the economy and, and transitions are great opportunities to reevaluate what you're focused on and, and what actually matters for your businesses and, and partnerships. So like we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that can get you pulled off base. You know, I think resets in the economy right now, I think, you know, th things that happen from a recession or stagflation or, you know, Bitcoin collapsing or all that kind of, all the kind of craziness going on right now can be very, very distracting, but we've been through this, these types of things a couple of times in the past. And Oftentimes the most successful engagements here are ones where you're refocusing on what the priority is for the business. So I just really, really recommend and strongly advise anybody who's going through some challenges right now to, to, to reevaluate, uh, what you're doing from a business standpoint, what's important to the organization and cutting out the excess and the noise. That's really thoughtful. And my suggestion is go for a 10 minute walk because that could really help clear your mind if you're sitting down for too long. That's my contribution to this. I learned a new term this weekend. I've never heard it before, but it's called forest bathing. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was taking a bath in the forest, but no, it's, it's walking around like nature. So along your 10 minute walk, Paul, have you ever heard that before? I've never heard that before. I enjoy going on suburb bathing. I just walk around my suburbs. All right. Well, I'm going to put on some flip flops and I don't know, take a walk in the desert, I guess. Go desert bathing, Adam. <laughs> doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. We should no, probably cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> We'll fix, we'll fix this entire episode in post. Fix that in post. Fix that in post. Thanks everybody for joining us. This has been the incident report. We'll see you back next week. Have a good one. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. The incident report is brought to you by Quest Technology Management. With over 40 years of experience, Quest is a leading technology integrator, working seamlessly with your staff and systems to achieve your IT goals. Learn more about everything they do at questsys.com. And if you have questions or suggestions for the podcast, you can always email Adam and myself at the incident report at We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.